you don't know, he is alive. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Well, join me. Let's pray this morning. Father, God, we worship you. We honor you in this place. God, we're so excited that Jesus is alive, that death has been defeated. We thank you, Father, for sending your Son. God, we thank you not just today, but every single day of what you've done for us and what you continue to do for us. In Jesus' name, Father, we take this time to lift up our nation to you. God, we pray for your glory, God, to fill this nation. We pray for the reign of your spirit to pour out on this nation. God, we lift up those in authority. We lift up our president to you. We thank you, Father, for moving and working in their lives. And we thank you, God. We thank you for this service, Father. We thank you because of the message of the gospel that people's lives will be changed forever. We thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everyone says, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, before you're seated, greet someone around you. Say, he is risen. Amen. Hallelujah. And you can be seated. Praise God. Man, I got so excited that I almost dropped this thing. Did y'all see that? Hallelujah. Hey, we're so excited about today. If you haven't noticed, we're so honored that you're here to celebrate and to worship with us this morning. If you're a guest, I just want to take a moment to welcome you and to thank you so much for being a part uh, of our service. We're so glad that you're here. We're so glad that you're celebrating Easter, that you're celebrating Resurrection Sunday with us. Or maybe you're not here in person, but you're watching via live stream or Facebook. You know, the, the technology is amazing because people can tune in all around the globe. And so we want to welcome you as well. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our service. But if you're a guest, I just want to say there's a card in the seat back in front of you that says, I'm new here. If you could do us a huge favor, take that card and fill it out uh, with as much information as you're comfortable with. Then you can do one of two things with that card. You can take that card and place it in the offering at the end of service, or you can hold on to that card until we're dismissed. And we have a guest center specifically for you to where you can meet members of the staff. We can greet you and thank you in person for being a part of our service. Place a free gift in your hand. And that that room, that area is directly right behind these back doors, right out in our foyer area to the right. You can't miss it. So please stop by so that we can greet you and thank you in being a part of our service this morning. Now, you're probably wondering what this is that I'm holding in my hand. And I have got a chocolate pie. Come on now. I, I, I heard some of that. We are selling some pies. This is from Louise Spinks. She made a lot of pies. Miss Becky made her famous Italian cream cake. And let me tell you, that cake is so amazing that we've already sold out of them. Okay, so, but we do have some pies left. You can actually pre, you can actually pre-order one of her cakes, but the, the spots are limited for that. But the reason we're doing this is because here at Word of Life, our Kids World ministry during the summer and during the majority of the year, we do an outreach program where we, we go into certain parts of our city where we communicate the gospel, where we love on people. And we have some of those children that go to camp with us. And there's no way financially that they can make it by themselves. And so every single dime, every single penny that you pay for these pies and for these desserts are going for these kids to have an incredible, incredible experience at camp this year. Maybe you're one of those that are on these incredible, crazy diets and you don't want to buy anything that has any calorie in it. You can still go and donate. You can still give and sow so that these kids' lives can be transformed and changed forever by the message of the gospel. Amen. Pastor also said that he prayed the calories out of these things, so so you'll be good, all right, in case you're wondering. So it's that's that's a, that's happened as well. So please, once service is dismissed, go go out into the lobby and, and get a pie, get a cake, look and see what they have, because what you're doing is you are making a difference in someone else's life, and I believe that their lives are going to be transformed and changed forever by your generosity. Can I get an amen? Now, there's a lot of other things that are happening and taking place here at Word of Life. So to see what's going on, check out this video. Hey, y'all. We want to welcome you. If this is your first service with us, we'd love to meet you after service in our guest center. In the chair in front of you, there's a card that says I'm new here. You can fill that out and drop it in the offering or bring it with you to our guest center after service. 
this coming Sunday is our water baptism service. That morning we'll be doing baptism in our second service. And if you want to be baptized that day, you can get signed up at our information center or online. And our youth have something special planned that day as well. Hey guys, Jeffrey here with Fusion. And I got a problem I want to talk to you guys about. This thing plagues all of us every Sunday. We come to church and have a phenomenal service. And once it's over, we get the dreaded question, where are we gonna eat today? Well, on April 28th, we've solved that question for you. We're gonna be having fish plates for sale for $15. You can pick these up after either one of our services. They're gonna have fish and fries and hush puppies in them. And every plate you buy helps send a student to camp. So on April 28th, let's solve the problem where we're gonna eat and send some students to camp. Guys, we've got an event that you cannot miss. Hey gentlemen, I got some exciting news about our men's conference that's coming up Saturday, May the 4th. Pastor, could you share a little bit about what's gonna happen at the conference? John, we're gonna have uh, churches uh, from Shreveport. We're yeah. gonna have Word of Life here. We're gonna have our campus uh, dwelling place in Lake Charles, yeah. plus we're gonna have other churches. We're yeah. gonna be meeting in Alexandria, Louisiana. Right in the middle. Yeah, at One Life Church. We're going to have an awesome time. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be sharing the Word of God about move and how yeah. you can move forward. And I'm going to share particularly about how you can move into a difference-making place as a man of God. Good. And I believe God's going to do some awesome things. We want to encourage you to come and be a part of it. It's going to be great. It's going to be good, Pastor Sam. Along with that very timely message, we're going to have some fun. There are going to be games, and not just games, but men competition. <laughs> there's going to be prizes, Pastor Sam. I hear there's going to be chainsaws. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'm chainsaw. in for that. Golf clubs, I know you'd be down for that. Uh, also, riding reels, things like that. Some friendly, awesome. healthy competition. We're going to have food because we, yeah. we can't go there without eating. Yeah. And uh, so it's going to be a great, a great yeah. time. Also, Pastor, I would just want to challenge the men with this, this, this one thought, and that is this. Would you invest one day in something that could affect you forever? I, I believe if you do, it yeah. could change your whole life. We're going to also have a special guest there, Chris Hart from Compassion uh, International. It's going to be a tremendous gonna time. You're going to be blessed. Here's what you got to do. You got to man up. <laughs> I love you got to make up your mind. I love it. I'm going to do something different Man on up. that one day and see God do something different in my life. That's so good. Gentlemen, for more information, just go out to the lobby, to the information center, and we can get you registered, get you signed up, or we can just give you more information. Either way, we can help you if you just go to the information center located in the lobby. Amen. Wednesday, May 1st, is our first Wednesday service, which is a special time every month for worship and ministry. And that night, we have our family table starting at 5.30 p.m. You can come and get a great dinner, and it supports our outreach team. The cost is $8 for adults and only $5 for kids. Next Sunday, we have our water baptism and our fish fry for our students. Our worship night and family table on May 1st, and our men's conference on the 4th. When it's time to grow or make a change in your life, sometimes knowing where to start is the hardest part. That's where our Discover class comes in. It's our membership and connect class designed specifically to help you identify your spiritual gifts, get connected with others like you, and begin to grow in your Christian life. It happens the first two Sundays of every month in room 205 during our second service. All you have to do is show up and be ready to discover your purpose. Good morning, Word of Life Center. I'm as excited that Jesus Christ is alive. Is there anybody in the house that's thankful? It's thankful that we've got the greatest message to give. We've got the greatest message, and that is that Jesus is alive. He is risen. He's given us permission. He's given us opportunity to be a part and share in his life. And so I want to share just a quick thought in regards to giving and receiving from God and, and then also generosity because whenever we're generous, whenever we're generous, whenever we're generous, the truth is that, that, that people's lives are touched and changed. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, it says this. It says that God loves a cheerful giver. How many cheerful givers do we have in the place? 
Some of you are like, I'm not quite sure if I'm cheerful or not. Well, let, let me just help you with, with, with something. A person is cheerful when he realizes what his generosity is doing. A, a, a person is cheerful. They're excited to give. They anticipate. They can't look forward. Excuse me. They look forward to the opportunity to give because they realize a cheerful person realizes that their giving makes a difference in people's lives. How many in the place love making a difference in somebody else's life? Is there anybody here that's like, I love it, I love it. I know some are like, I just want a difference made in my life. Well, let me just say this, let me say this. When you do give, when you are generous, it does open the door for God to make a difference in your life. Can somebody say amen to that? But on the front side of it, your generosity makes a difference in somebody else's life. And you say, well, what is that? Well, one of the things that happens is that people can hear the greatest message. And that is the message that we're here celebrating this morning. And that is Jesus is alive and he's got a plan and purpose for your life. And your life will be different if you'll just accept him as your savior and allow him to be your Lord. How many believe the power of the gospel is true the power of the gospel is relevant for today and the power of the gospel can change people's lives if they can just hear it come on now they can just hear it. well they can they can and they do because of you and your generosity to give and the tithes and the offerings listen I have a couple different ways to give one is on site you're gonna have the opportunity to do that at the end of the service we'll be passing those containers then and you can grab the envelope that's located in the seat in front of you, uh, the back, on the back seat in front of you. Just grab that. You can fill that out. And we, again, we'll be circulating the containers in just a few moments or at the end of the service. And you can give then. Or you can go to wordoflifecenter.org and you can give there. Wordoflifecenter.org. You can give online. It's there for your convenience. You can give literally 24-7. Anytime it's available for you. Again, are you thankful for the message of the gospel? Are you thankful that we get to share it and we get to be a part of it? Hey, if you would like, you can uh, raise, if you brought, came prepared to give and you have your uh, tithes and offerings, or you've given online. Maybe you've given online if you're watching live stream. You can just raise your hand if you've given online, or you can hold up your envelope. If you're ready to do that, let's do that. We're just going to pray God's blessing over this point of worship. Father, we just bless you. We thank you, Father, for the privilege of giving. We don't give because we have to. We give because we love to. We give because we realize, we know that our giving makes a difference in people's lives. So, Father, thank you for the opportunity of make a, get, making a difference in this world. So, Father, receive our tithes, receive our offerings as we mean them. Faith in you, love for you, love for the world, love for the kingdom. In Jesus' precious name, everybody that agrees says a great big amen. amen. Hey, we're getting ready to, to worship the Lord, uh, but I'd like the, our prayer team to go ahead and stand and take your place. Go ahead, prayer team, go ahead and stand and take your place. Hey, over the course of the next few moments, we're going to be worshiping God. God's presence is here. And if you sense in your heart that you would like to be prayed for, you want somebody to join their faith with yours, to see God move in your life, just step out into the aisle and make your move uh, towards one of these prayer team members, and they're going to join their faith with yours to see God do something amazing in your life. For everybody else, let's go ahead and stand, and let's worship God in this place. Those of you that know Jesus and know what the cross has done for you, just celebrate and remember this morning. If you've never met him, he is reaching out his hand to you today and asking you to come and have that relationship with him. Nothing is separating us anymore because of what he did for us at the cross. Amen. Center on that today and celebrate his resurrection. I would be hopeless without your goodness. I would be desperate without your love. Slave to the darkness If it wasn't for the cross You know all me With your kindness Show me the way When I was lost Where would I be?
men with mercy. Now your mercy will be my song. In all the glory, in all the power of the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner.
thank you that we celebrate that cross and we celebrate the resurrection. We thank you that today you bring lives alive. You open hearts, you open ears that we might understand the impact, the power of that great, great resurrection that we celebrate today. Thank you for working, Father, today mightily by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. Amen. Aren't you glad to be at church today? Amen. I believe that we're living in a time where church is important. As much as the enemy wants to devalue it and push it down, push it away, the more we ought to say, no, 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 that's not right. That's not right. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to live for God and serve God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to talk to you today about life without the cross. And uh, I, told, I told the first service this, and they laughed at me, and I kind of laughed at myself, but, but this is really a narrative of the difference in life that Jesus has made. It, it, it's not necessarily a sermon. And then I said, well, I guess I'll end up preaching for sure. But, but I want to share this with you because sometimes if we don't really understand some things about who we are and what God has done for us, we can get trapped into a false place. And, and so I'm going to read a scripture to you, Genesis chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. The Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Hey, you got it. Darkness, light. God, listen to me today, God created the world out of darkness. This thing started in darkness. God created light for man to walk by and to live in. But really, he also created, created light for man to live by. And Adam and Eve, how many of you know who Adam and Eve are? You know, everybody knows Adam and Eve, and they know they ate the apple in the garden. Amen. But I can tell you, it probably wasn't an apple. I don't know what it was, but it probably wasn't an apple. But anyway, we know that they transgressed in the garden, even though they were made in the likeness of God, and God had given them light, given them the garden. They transgressed against God because when God said, they said he didn't really say. Yeah. In other words, they put their own spin on it, their own interpretation on it. So man transgressed in the garden. Now listen to this. And there was still light, but darkness came into the heart of man. Darkness came into the heart of man. Say, so, well, pastor, how do you know that? The first offspring, listen to me, the first offspring, the next generation from Adam and Eve, one brother killed the other brother. Cain killed Abel. One generation and darkness was already pushing in, creeping in to where man lived a life that was totally different from what God wanted. Now you say, well, I know that. Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But I'll tell you, the good news is I know my history. Do you? See, some people, they don't know where they came from, and they don't know where they're going. I know where I came from, and I know where I'm going. See, it's, it's sad today how many people are just guessing. But see, I've got a body of proof. Yeah. Thank God I do. Amen? So the natural light, listen to me, the natural light continued... But now, humanity had to navigate life through a cloud of darkness 
in their heart. If you don't under, listen, from the beginning of time, that's the way man has lived, navigating life, trying to live life with darkness in their hearts. The world moved forward, but that cloud of darkness was still there ruling in men's hearts. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because I want to talk to you about living without the cross and understanding the difference, okay? See, we, we think of history and we think, we look back on history and we think how cool this time was or that time was, you know, back in the olden days before Jesus and all the, you know, the different empires and all of that. Let me tell you something. It was a cruel, ruthless place. The world was ruthless. It was cruel all the way until Jesus. And the reason I want to get you to understand that is you've got to understand the power and the impact of the cross. But listen to living without the cross. Now, I just took one picture of history, okay? I'm kind of a history guy anyway, so it was fun for me to do this. But I'm going to pick the time right before Jesus came. Okay, so that means there's 5,000 years of history. Or 4,000 years, you, you decide. But some point of history that's there. All right, now listen to me. Okay, you'd think over the years things would have gotten better. But they didn't because man's heart was dark. There was no help. So I'm going to take a picture of, of Roman times just before Jesus came as a snippet of life as it moved forward without light in the heart of man. So you can understand this, okay, where, where I'm going with this. So listen to me, okay. So I just took a few things that, that this is the way life was, okay. First of all, there was no sanctity of life whatsoever. Life meant nothing. Infants were killed for any reason. Well, they're deformed. They threw them out in a ditch. Well, they're the wrong sex. Throw them away. Some people just did it because they liked it. That was the world, folks. That, that, was, the war, that was the way the world. Ra abortions were rampant. Oh, we got a bad problem. Nothing. Listen, it was just a matter of course. I, I pulled this out of a history book that I was reading about this, uh, about the Carthaginians during this time frame. And it said they offered up their own children as sacrifices. And those who had no children would buy little ones from the poor people, cut their throats just like they were a lamb or a bird, and offer them as a sacrifice. Meanwhile, the mother of that child would stand by without tears or without any mourning. Ooh, that's terrible, that's heartless. That's the world before Jesus. That's the way people lived. Just think about this, just remember the gladiators. It wasn't something uh, out of a movie, folks. It was, it was crude, cruel, and heartless. Sexual immorality was at a place that you'd be embarrassed to even think about today. There were immoral practices. Adultery was normal. Homosexuality was normal. Bestiality was normal. People celebrated that. They celebrated all of that. So, well, that's terrible. Well, why do you think it's terrible? It's because the light came, because Jesus came. Women's rights. Women had none. You were just, a, you were just like a slave. You had no choices. You had no rights. You just did what you were told. And if you didn't do what you were told right or well enough, 
you were separated. You were divorced from your husband, and that couldn't even mean death, and it wasn't any big deal. There was nobody to judge you. I don't want to live back then. Well, you better thank God Jesus came. Amen. Charity and compassion. It's interesting because the Roman word for charity in the Greek and the word that we know as charity are totally different. The word we know as charity means we give because we want to help somebody. We want to bless somebody. We want to do something for someone. The Roman word for charity was, I'm going to give something in hopes I'll get something back. I only use my charity as a manipulation for someone else. A little bit different. Hospitals and health care. If you were sick and you didn't have any money, you died. You know, it's sad today. I mentioned this in, uh, when I was preaching in some other services, but I just got back from Lebanon here recently, and, and one of the saddest stories to me was a mother that was telling us that she had come as a refugee from Syria into Lebanon and gotten saved, but her baby got sick and couldn't breathe. They took the baby to the hospital. They put the baby on oxygen started doing better, but when they found out she didn't have any money, they took the oxygen off and the baby died. Now see, that appalls you, doesn't it? That was normal life. Somebody got sick, if they got wounded, just throw them in the, in the ditch. Just throw them, throw them away. That was life without the cross. Common people had no refuge for healing. That's why when Jesus came to the pool of Bethesda, it was packed with people. It was their only recourse. If that angel didn't stir the water and they didn't get in the water, they were going to die. Amen. Education was none. Reading, reading, writing, and arithmetic was only for a handful of people. There was no education before Jesus. Labor and economics. Do you know that before Jesus, listen to this, working daily for a livelihood, one, one Greek scholar said, was unbecoming to a gentleman. It was a vulgar means of livelihood of all hired workers who were paid to work. How many of you are going to get up and go to work in the morning? Yeah. It didn't happen. Well, who did all the work? Slaves. In fact, during this period of time, it was said that the Greeks actually, listen to this, and, and the Romans, actually there, was, there were five slaves for every person. Then nobody worked except the slaves. We don't have that anymore. We can work for ourselves. We can be honorable in what, in what we do. Science. No advancements in science. You know, they thought the, the world was flat. The world was flat, they thought. Now, you think that's funny. You think that's apocryphal, uh, that's just crazy, right? Oh, that's not, uh, who, who ever heard of such a thing? Well, if you'd have lived back then, that's what you would have believed because you wouldn't have any education. Liberty and justice. There were no laws for you. If you were an everyday person, there were no laws for you. If somebody had more than you, they could do what they wanted to do. You had no recourse to take it to a judge or take it to a court or call the police. You might not like the popo today, but I want to tell you, you better thank God for them. <laughs> well, it's bad right now. Well, let me tell you something. If it wasn't for those badges in Shreveport and Bossier, it'd be a lot worse. There were none. There was no liberty. There was no justice. You could be wrong, but you just got wronged. <laughs> 
This is a simple picture of life without the cross. Darkness ruled man's heart. There was nothing else. Surely the Jews lived by a code called the Ten Commandments, but they violated it every day. Because yeah. when your heart's dark, living by God's rules is a tough thing to do. In fact, it's an impossible thing to do. The world was mean, ruthless, and selfish. But there's a scripture in John chapter 3, verse 16, that began a process. But God so loved the world. He loved the world anyway. That Listen to this. That he gave his only begotten son. That whoever, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved the world. And so something began to happen. Jesus came and walked on the earth, and for three and a half years, we understand, somewhere in that time frame, Jesus demonstrated another way of life. Do you know that Jesus went contrary to all of the conformity of the system of the world? That's why nobody in the world liked him. That's why the darkness didn't like him, because he did things different. He lived a different life. He talked about mercy. He talked about compassion. He lived it. He demonstrated it. John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Listen to what the Word of God says. It says, The Word gave life to everything that was created. Now listen to this. And His life brought light to everyone. His life brought light to everyone. His life turned on a light so that man could see there is another way to live. Another life, another lifestyle, another way to live your life every day. Now listen to verse 5. It says that light shines where? In In darkness. And the darkness can never extinguish it. I got good news for you. I don't care what the world does. I don't care how they act. I don't care how filthy they get. They're not stopping me. They're not stopping the gospel. They're not stopping the light from shining. It's not going to happen. It cannot be extinguished. Then came the ultimate change in life as we know it. And it started with the death of the one who brought the light. Let me read you this. Listen to this. Luke chapter 23, beginning in verse 44. Now it came to pass after the sixth hour, Jesus is on the cross, there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened. Now listen to this. The sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his his last. Darkness once again returned to the earth. But here's the great thing. The Father... Press the reset button. Because when Jesus was raised from the dead, he was saying, light be. He was saying, light be. He brought light back to the world. Not in a natural sense, because the lights came back on. But in a spiritual sense, because now that light shines into the heart of man inside of God's children. Jesus reset the whole world order by his death and and burial and resurrection. Now you can go back and look at all of those things I talked about, how bad they were, and see that anywhere the light shines, they change. Anywhere the light shines, they change. 
You can go into a society that's living in darkness and don't even know anything about the light, but when you start preaching the light and light shines into the hearts of men, things change. Yeah. Why? Because Jesus reset everything. With the resurrection, he gave every man the opportunity to walk in the light and not in the darkness. He died to make the way for humanity, not only to see the light, but to live in it. He broke the power of sin that kept man in darkness so we could step into the light. Here's what happened to man. You ready? Listen to this. Listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. For God, who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so that we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. We become carriers of, of the light of God. You are the one who makes a difference in your job, in your family, wherever you walk, wherever you live. When you carry the light and you live by the light of the Son of God, you change darkness. And no matter how darkness wants to extinguish it, it cannot. It cannot do it. God in the beginning said, light be, then there was light. And when Jesus was raised from the dead, he said, light be. And light started to shine. And when it did, humanity started to change. Things begin to change. The Bible says that you have been called out of darkness into his glorious light. 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 says that you are now children of light. But now listen to me today. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. See, even in America, uh, people who walk in darkness are confused because they, they keep talking about their values and what they believe. And, and they're confused because it doesn't work their way, but it works God's way. But they don't understand something. Let me tell you what they don't understand. They don't understand that they're living by the light that you shine. They don't realize that if you shut your light off, that that darkness would overwhelm them and they'd go back to the same place that the Romans were. But it's not going to happen as long as you're here and your light is shining. But here's the thing you've got to hear. We only have light in our lives as we stay in the light. Okay, listen to me. You have to stay in the light. See, Isaiah gave this prophecy over in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2. And he said there's coming a day of great darkness when darkness is going to cover the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Darkness is in the world. You can't complain about the darkness. It's not going to leave. Listen to me. But what you can do is be the light. What you can do is be the one who shines. The one who says no to things that darkness says yes to. See, the Bible says in, in John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. See, I've got a light in me that leads to life. I don't walk in darkness. Why would I want to walk in darkness and let it try to consume the light that's in me? But you know what's interesting? Jesus, in, in John, we just read John 3.16. Listen to what it says in John 3 verse 19. It says the people love the darkness more than the light because their deeds were evil. <laughs> they love the darkness more than the light because their deeds 
for evil. Hey, you've got to make a choice. See, here's the problem, and, I, and I'll explain it this way. This will help you. When we had those lights off the second time, you know what I saw? I saw people turn on the lights on their cell phone. You know why? You're trying to make your own light in the darkness. Now, don't get upset with me. I'm not pointing my finger at you. But that's exactly what happened. People try, listen to me, they try to make their own light and live by their own light. Well, this is what I believe. I'm going to live by this. Well, you can live by it, but you're going to go to hell. I'm sorry, but you can live however you want. You can make any kind of light you want. Listen to what the Word of God says. This is a great scripture. This will help you. In, in Isaiah 50, verse 11, the New Century Version says it this way. But instead, of, instead, some of you want to light your own fires, make your own light. So go walk in the light of your fires. Trust in your own light to guide you. But this is what you will receive from me. You'll lie down in a place of pain. Listen to me today, especially in America, we have people saying all kinds of things about what they believe, and they're actually throwing God in there with it. Well, he's my God, and you know, and I'm this, and, but God, he's still my God, and he loves me. Listen to me. You can't make your own light. The Bible tells us very clearly that the word of God is the light to our path. You have to go by what God says by what God's Word says. And see, when you're walking in the light, the conviction of the Holy Spirit will keep you walking in that light. Yeah. But, but once you decide you want to do what you want to do, then you're going to start hunting for fires like yours. You're going to, have to, you're going to go find somebody that has a light. Oh, you've got a light like mine. We must be right. <laughs> and you create a coalition Kind of like around your own campfire. Oh, we're going to sing Kumbaya. We're all here together. Isn't this wonderful? The problem is it's not God's life. See, it's so easy for you to decide how you want to live your life when God's got a great life for you if you'll just listen. If you'll just let him guide you. If you'll let him lead you. He's got his own life for you to live his purpose for you, his plans for you, and they're not what you're going to find out there in the darkness using your, your own light as an excuse. Thank you for your, I know I'm being pretty straight here. I'm normally not like that, but. But listen to what Isaiah 5 verse 20 says. What sorrow for those who say evil is good and good is evil. That dark is light and light is dark. That bitter is sweet, and sweet is bitter. Do you know that there are a lot of people today that would try to deceive you into thinking, well, you're not a Christian. If you were, you'd love everybody. I want to tell you something. You better understand how to walk in the light. And quit trying to make your own light. Quit trying to live by your own light. Or, here's another scary thing, live by somebody else's light. See, you may be here today, somebody brought you, and you're enjoying the presence of God, and you recognize, hey, man, this feels good, but, but that doesn't mean anything, because you're living by somebody else's light. It's only when it comes in you, and it shines out of you, that it becomes yours, and it's a way to live that you can do for yourself. Too many times we have, listen to me. We have husbands living by the light of their wives. We have children living by the light of their parents. Because they never allowed that light to shine in them. They never allowed their lives to be what they want it to be. They never allowed themselves to live the life God has for them. What happens? You create a false light of acceptance to avoid the reality of the word of God in your life. Don't get caught up in the light of someone else's fire. Don't do that because it's going to lead you to destruction, to pain, the word says. Here's the reality of life after the resurrection. Okay? Listen to this. Yes, Jesus influenced everything. Everything. Things got better because of the light. 
Christian influence stemmed the tide of evil among the evil, challenged conf- consciences. But you can't live by somebody else's life. I mean, look, I don't mind, I don't mind, mind telling you, man, I'm glad I can go to the hospital if I need to. Now, I don't want to go. If you want to go, I need, you, you need help. <laughs> Nobody wants to go. But thank God. Thank God. I, I, I know that if I need mercy or I need compassion, there's somebody there to help me. Why? Because of the influence. Because if I had a flat tire on the side of the road, somebody would stop and help me. You, you know, I could go back and read all of these areas that, listen, I don't care whether you believe it or not, we're stemming the tide of abortion in America. We are, we are. And we're speaking out against sexual immorality. It's not right. Listen, I'm not doing this to hurt anybody today, but listen to me, it's not right to live in adultery. You can't, you, there's no way you can make it right. N- homosexuality is not right. Abortion is not right. Those are things that are not right, not because I don't agree with them, but because God doesn't agree with them. You have to understand and know that the life that we live is different, and you've got, you can't go by somebody else's light and kind of come in, well, I've been out in darkness for a while. I think I'll come to church and get some light. <laughs> Light's in you, or it's not in you. You live in the light. You walk in the light. One of the best ways you can determine you're not living in it is when you think something evil is good. Yeah. Well, God understands. God's not a dummy. He understands everything. But that doesn't mean it's right. <coughs> not trying to be hard on you today. I just want you to understand. Listen to me. You can be living just like those Romans lived. By walking in darkness when lights, when lights come. Another life. I say, Pastor, how, why are you saying that? Because I used to live that other life. I used to live in darkness. I know what it's like to live in darkness. But I also know what it's like when light shines on the inside. And all of a sudden, life becomes worth living. It's not a drudgery. It's not a fight. It's not something that you're struggling with. It's something that's enjoyed because you know God's in your life now and you're living by a light that's beyond your natural ability to live in. Now, here's the the point. Listen to this. People can reset their lives. It's interesting. I I was surfing the other day. How many of you men surf? You know, with the channel changer. <laughs> Don't look at me so holy, Irwin. I know better. You can hang your head in shame, but I know you. <laughs> Just a habit, you know. And I stopped on this thing. It was about this, uh, this singer who was married and, and to this musician, and they had a band, and, and um, she was the star. Her name was Tina Turner, by the way. And, oh, hush back there. Who ever said that? <laughs> Thought you were going to say amen for a minute. But, but my point is, she was being beat up by him, taking advantage of him. One day, she just had it up to here. She walked over across the freeway, got some help, and never turned back. She reset her life. Okay? Listen to me. You can reset your life naturally. You can do better. You can move forward. You can change what you're doing and do something different or go after a dream. And none of those things are wrong, but I want you to listen to this very carefully, okay? You, you've got to hear this. You can reset your life, but there's only one way to reset your eternal destiny. There are not many ways. See, listen, all these little fires that you play around with, they can't reset your destiny. They can make you feel good. You can have a group of people, a social group, uh, but, but they can't reset your destiny. There's only one thing that can reset your destiny, and that's through your resurrection through Jesus. That's the only way. And without that, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12, has a verse for you, and I'm going to just read part of it. Listen to this. You lived in this world 
without God and without hope. I was living that way for 27 years. 20, yeah, 26 years. I, I was without God. I was without hope. But see, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, light shines into that darkness and it separates you from the darkness. Why would you want to go back to that darkness? Why would you want to live in darkness? Well, I got the light, but I'm going to live in the darkness. It didn't work that way. You only have light as you live in light. You are not a light source. You are a reflection. You got it? You're a reflection. You're not a light source. I don't care how cute you are, how smart you are. You are not a light source. There's only one. And when Jesus died the death of the cross, listen to me. He died for you. And he was raised from the dead to reset your life. That's what the resurrection did. To put it in the light where you can live his life and no longer live in darkness. I want you to bow your heads with me, please. Now listen, we are not through, but it's important, very important, that you bow your heads with me, close your eyes, and listen to me very carefully. Listen. If you're here today, and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You, someone may have brought you today and you just heard the gospel today for the first time. Maybe you've heard it before, but it's penetrated to your heart. God's trying to speak to you today. Today is your day. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to have you come to the front or anything like that. I'm going to pray with you though. Maybe you're here today and you walked away from the light. Maybe you're living in darkness, and you know you're supposed to be living in light. The problem is that darkness will overwhelm your light. You can't live that way. The light is the only way. Maybe you're here today and you're just not sure, but you say, Pastor, I need you to pray for me today. I need to, I need to make Jesus my Lord. I need to get my life right with the Lord. I just need to have assurance. If that's you today, while your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed, just as an act of your faith, I want you to lift your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. Pray for me. You lift it up, put it back down. Thank you. Thank you for those hands. Thank you. Thank you. I'm looking all around, hands up all over. The, all over. You put them back down. If you hadn't raised your hand, you need to do it. If nothing else, just as an act of faith, say, I need prayer. Lift your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. More lifting their hands. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray, but I'm going to ask all of you, the whole congregation, which that means you if you raise your hand, to pray this prayer with me. Now, this is not all there is to it. It's just the beginning. But it's a great start. You can't soothe your conscience. All you're doing is playing around with the light if you soothe your conscience by raising your hand. But you know what? The other side of that is it can be a new beginning for you because your life is being reset today. So would you pray with me today, everyone, please? Just say this with me. Say, Father, thank you for sending your Son to die for me that I might have life, that I might have light. I choose Jesus as my Lord, as my Savior. Thank you, Father for sending him to die for my sins and that you forgive me of my sins because of Jesus. I choose Jesus. I choose to walk in the light to be free in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen to me today. That's a beginning for you. Paul's going to come and tell you what your next step is because Listen, anybody can just pray a prayer, but you've got to walk in the light. And there are steps you can take, and we'll help you with those where God can work in your life in a great way because we love you and we want to see God do great things through you. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord, Paul. Hallelujah.
In just a moment, we're going to receive our offering. But before that, I just want to reiterate a couple of things that Pastor said. For those of you that raised your hand, you, you've made the best decision, the most important decision of your life. And I just want to, want to challenge you in this. It's easy to, like Pastor Sam, soothe your conscience just by raising your hand and then putting it back down. And the, the, the temptation of going back to that lifestyle is there. But I want to encourage you. There's, a, there's another step for you to take. There's a next step from raising your hand. Raising your hand is, is not the end. It is just the beginning. And we want to help you take whatever that next step looks like for you. Maybe it's, it's going public with your faith and getting water baptized. Or maybe it's, it's to learn more about the gifts that God has placed in you. And that's going through Discover. There's many, many different steps that you can take. But I want to encourage you that each and every one of you that lifted your hand, there's a step that you need to take. And we want to help you with that step. And so if you raised your hand, there's a card in the seat back in front of you that says next steps. Or you can text the word new to 88,000. For those that were watching online, and maybe you made that decision by watching it wherever you are, just click that link right underneath the video stream that says next steps. We want to get in contact with you to help you. We're not going to pester you or anything like that. We just want to be there for you because we love you. And we believe that every single person has a next step with their walk with Jesus. And so that's what we want to do. And so what you'll do is you'll take that card, fill it out with just your name, your phone number, your email, and just drop that card in the offering. And we will contact you because we want to help you. And we believe, like I said, that there is a next step for you. Amen. At this time, I'd like to ask the ushers to go ahead and stand and get ready. And we're going to pray uh, over the offering. And then we're going to receive that and go over a few more announcements uh, before we're dismissed this morning. So Father, God, we thank you for today. Father, we thank you for the message. God, and I thank you for every generous person in this place, God, that's sowing into your kingdom. God, that's sowing so that they can make a difference in other people's lives. We thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We're going to give the ushers just a few minutes for them to pass those containers. I just want to remind you about a few things that are happening next week. Next Sunday morning is going to be a very, very special morning because we're going to celebrate with some people who are going public with their faith and getting water baptized. There's still time for you to sign up if you'd like to be one of those. All you have to do is just go out to the information center in the lobby or you can go to our website and get signed up because we want to celebrate with you by going public. It's, it's such an incredible, incredible time. So I want to encourage you to sign up and don't forget, you can go out to the lobby. There's still some more pies. There's still some more goodies for you to buy to help get these kids to camp. Go donate, go pick up a pie, go bless someone else and be generous and give them something as well. And I believe that these kids' lives will be changed forever. Also, if you didn't notice this morning, uh, we have a couple of photo booths set up for you to take pictures with your family because you all look so, so good this morning. So there's a photo booth out in the foyer as well as one in Kids World as you're picking up your children. So please stop by. Somebody's there to take a picture that, that will use your phone to take a picture uh, for you. So I want to encourage each and every family to do that. Also, if you're a guest this morning, feel free to stop by the guest center so that we can greet you. And thank you so much for being a part of our service. At this point, I'd like everyone to stand. We're going to have prayer partners here at the front as we're dismissed. If you made that decision this morning, come and tell one of these men and women and let them pray with you and agree with any need that you have. Let them pray over you. And we believe that, like we said, this is not the end. It is the beginning of your life, your resurrection life with Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, go and have an incredible, incredible day. And we will see you next week. We love you. You are dismissed. Yeah, I needed a rescue. My sin was heavy.